Last time on Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater. Viva waited in his new office at the HBI for his first mission. Once it arrived and he left to attempt it, he was ambushed by a group of hobgoblins and knocked unconscious. Cersei and Alec met Fortiga and Pleak on the road toward the White Castle, then they all continued in that direction. When they arrived, most of them abandoned their worldly possessions and completed the entrance process to White Castle while Pleak waited outside with Fortiga's imp. Ramses took this opportunity to reveal himself to his old friend Cersei and warn her about the influence of the HPI, and they took in some of the local cuisine. And now, Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater continues. Uh, which you also see, like I said, Taverns, Homes, uh, they have a smithy, although you, you can't appear to be able to go inside of the smithy. It's, it's a lock smithy that you, uh, there's a service window. Uh, uh, a lock smithy, you say? A locked smithy, so you can't get inside. Only the smithy is allowed inside. Uh, but you can you can still have your weapons from your extra-dimensional space. You can transfer it from your extra-dimensional space to the smithy. He can, you know, smith it up, and then transfer it back to your space for you when it's done. That's how that works. So they do have a good smithy here. It's just uh, you're not allowed to go inside. What can they What can they uh, smith? What can they smith? Um, well, he does a lot of stuff for armor mostly. He does arrow catching shields, balanced armor, benevolent armor, deathless armor, determination armor. Righteous armor, unbound armor, and vigilant armor. And for your weapons, he can make them uh, axiomatic, conductive, or cunning. <laughs> Cersei's got a shitty AC. I'm really looking to try to bump that up above fucking 13. <laughs> the ideal. I, I, I don't know. Well, how much money do you have to blow? And I'll tell you what your uh, options are then. Uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> I've got twelve thousand. All right, so you could afford uh, either balanced, benevolent, or deathless. Deathless. Let's see what, what those. What are those yeah. entail? Yeah, I'll look it up real quick. One second. I can't wear armor though. That's the problem. Well, the, whatever, uh, whatever you do wear, don't you wear like leather or a robe or something? You can have this no, done to any. Yeah. You can have this, some of this stuff done to your robe. I'll check, but for some of the stuff, I'll, I'll allow it. Um, no, I can't wear light armor. Any kind of armor uh, hinders my magic. Uh, Some of the stuff I might let you cast on a robe. Let me see what it is, though. Uh, yeah. Deathless protects you from uh, negative energy, harmful negative or harmful positive energy. It absorbs the first 10 points of positive or negative energy damage per attack that you would normally take. That's pretty dope, actually. And you have a 25% chance to ignore negative levels from any attack. Ooh, it doesn't block. It does not block healing of any kind. It does not protect against positive and negative effects that don't do damage or so negative levels. But yeah. So yeah, I'll let you, I'll let you do this. But I make your robe deathless if you like. Yeah. Uh, but that'll yeah. So that'll help you pre uh, prevent stuff like uh, ability drain and things like that. That's pretty dope. And I take I can uh, negate ten points of positive or negative. Negative. Yep. And twenty five percent chance that you can ignore ability drain. So. Alright, that's pretty sweet. Uh, what's the what's the cost on that? Cost on the Deathless Armor, I think that was the most expensive of the three, was... Oh no, it's not, it's only 6,000. 6,000, well, yeah, that, 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 that'll be fun for me. Um, can I... I'm just gonna cast it on my white robe. Uh, I really don't... All I have is, like, my immolation shirt. Um, well, you're gonna have to turn over your white robe to the smithy to have that done, then. I, I, people walk around naked. Yeah, matter. yeah, it's fine. So you give your robe to the smithy, he says, uh, you know, you, I transfer this white robe to the smith. Uh, he takes your robe and says, oh, rope's easy, it's not even armor, so I can have this uh, magic up for you within the hour. Uh, it, but it'll return, it'll return to your cube, so you won't be able to wear it again until you leave the city. Wait, 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 wait. I just want to, I want to wear it now. Ah! He says, well, for me, to, for me to smith it, you have to transfer it to the smith, and for me to transfer it back to you, you have to transfer it to your cube. I can't, I'm not allowed to transfer goods from the smith shop just straight, straight through this window. Can I go so, to the city, city, gate, city so policy. Can I wear it? Yeah, you could probably uh, go to the customs kiosk and, and retrieve it. Right, if you well, want to check back there in like two hours, they can let you pick it up. If you guys don't mind, I'm sorry. I'm going to yeah, yeah. go do that. That's fine. Well, uh, can, can I get them to, I don't know, you know uh, I'm going to roll a diplomacy with yeah. them real quick and see if I can get them to dye the robe a different color. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a 30. He says, uh, we don't really do dyeing here at the smithy, but I'm sure there's a clothier in town who'd be willing to dye your robe for you. Well, I know you're a smithy. We just rub some ash on it make it kind of blackish gray? He's like, yeah, I could dirty it up for you if you want. Yeah, make it, make it nice and 
And not, says, I, I don't want her to look like, you know, nasty or anything, but soak it in some, like, you know, uh, ash water or whatever. And just, like, gray it up? He's like, I, I yeah. says, the guards aren't going to like it, but I'll, I'll do it if you want. Yeah, I mean, you would just notice that everyone else is very clean and, and uh, everyone else is dressed the same, and you will look different. So you you will get you will draw attention. Is all you, you just, I won't do that. Then I'll just wear the fucking white robes. All right. So you wait two hours and pick back up your robe. You guys want to wander around in that two hours and see what else is going on? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do some walking around. Um, a lot of the city is composed of uh, farms. There's a granary, a mill, a bakery, a sheep pasture, a wool works for the sheep. Uh, they got a very large market. A large, uh, the largest building in town is probably this Irori Temple. Um, they have a large watch hall, uh, which is a guild, so probably only guild members are allowed in there. They have a laundromat, uh, where you can have your clothes washed. I didn't, I undid it. <laughs> but but that, those are all the things that exist in town. It's a very pastoral, very, you know, very quiet, very painted. Everything's painted white. Everything's whitewashed. Um, yeah. Everything looks I'm clean. Not, People seem very friendly. Can I do a perception check to see if there's any uh, money on the ground? Maybe just like a coins, uh, anything? I'm like a homeless person. Yeah, yeah. You can roll uh, your perception. Roll me a perception check. Oh, uh, yeah, that wouldn't be. Any. Yeah, but you should roll it. It's a uh, 22. Yeah, you don't find any coins on the ground. Uh, but that's a good perception. You do stare at the ground really hard. Uh, uh, yeah. You do uh, notice... Something. Uh, roll me a knowledge nature. I got an 11 on that. Knowledge nature. All right, so you, it's something strange about the ground, something strange about this whole place, now that you kind of look around with that really good perception check. Uh, as a denizen of, of nature, you will notice that you can't see the sky, you can't see the grass. You, Yeah, there's nothing natural here. It's just a stone city. Like it's all stone, and there's not not much. I mean, you're a stone guy, so whatever. But you notice there's not much else to see nature wise. That's a stone city. Yeah, that's pretty concrete cool. jungle, yeah. huh? Yeah. There's like, there's, I have rocks. Those are rocks. There's no grass growing out of any clefts or. No, no grass growing out of the cracks in the rocks. So it just seems perfectly well maintained. Uh, there are some patches of grass, like there are uh, like open park areas in the city, and there's like their pastures and stuff like that. Uh, but it seems very well contained. It seems like stuff only grows exactly where they want it to. Patches of the flowers that I put in my hair. Uh, roll me a perception check to look for that area. Uh, 16? Uh, yeah, that's near the laundromat. So right outside the laundromat is a small flower field, and you'll recognize that the laundromat is the area. The laundromat is actually in the same building where your house was. The only building that was there that period of time was this laundromat. That's fun. I don't really have any intention to go to the laundry, I guess. <laughs> Good customer face. Shiny armor. Let's yeah. go to the laundry, man. Just hang out for a minute by the machines and see what's up. No, no, you need no. to go to that temple, right? I, mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know that temple by Rory. Is there that. a graveyard? Uh, there is not a graveyard. You do not see any sign of a graveyard even outside the temple by Rory. They don't seem to have any grave markers or anything. They do have a. They do have like a memorial wall. Uh, that is is for the people that have died. Like they do have like a remembrance wall, but there are no bodies or anything like that, or a graveyard or any sign of anything like that. Well, while he goes to the Aurora uh, Temple, I have no interest in that. I guess I'll go and uh, lay my hands on the the wall, and I'm gonna have a little prayer with Ergoa and Alec. I don't know what the shit you want. Okay, I, I want to go to a bar and see if I can hit someone up for a free drink, probably. Yeah. Uh, you go to yeah, a bar? Su su sucking dick for cubes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, no, you go, to, you go to a bar, and uh, almost immediately someone offers to buy you a drink. Cool. Uh, I go, uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, they ask what brings you to town. Uh, I, 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 a lot of the time I don't really know uh, why I'm going anywhere. Uh, 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 this The old man that. laughs. It's a, an elderly man. Um, but he seems very, like, able and strong for an old man. Um, uh, cool. Uh, what, what, what do you do, uh, old dude? He says, oh, I, you know, deliver messages uh, around town. I'm like the, the postal service for, for the town of White Castle. Any hiccups? Cool. Uh, I'm like, uh, I'm Alec. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for the drink. Yeah, he says, oh, uh, same, same to you. And he uh, reaches into his bag and pulls out a note for you. He says, here, I have a message for you. 
Oh, ready? You're caught. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess I'll, like, I don't have a lot going on. I'll, I'll go ahead and pop that open. I'll be like, do you mind if I, uh... No, he says. He says no. Cheers, and he uh, he he offers the holds up his cube and says, "Bartender, give this guy another drink." Cool. Well, I, I, I set that one out for some loose call. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I don't think I'm being rude, but I'm no, no, no. Yeah. You say that, and he nods, and he uh, hops down off his bar stool. You see, he's very short when he gets off the bar stool, but he has a very long staff, and he uh, whistles, and very slowly up walks a very large turtle, oh. uh, which he hops on the back of and rides out of the bar Sweet. with his messenger bag. I like that guy. Snail mail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the snailiest. Well, yeah, so uh, I'm going to yeah, pop that letter open and uh, peruse it as I go. All right. Uh, it says, Dear Alec, uh, it's been a long time since we've talked. How have you been? The afterlife is nice. I hope everything is going fine on the material plane. Uh, I hear you've made some nice new friends. Please keep in touch. Love, Mom. It's not eight. Um, uh, also, also enclosed in the envelope is uh, a bunch of gold coins. Yeah, it's just like my real mom. Roll me, <laughs> a, roll me a D20. Multiply that by ten. Oh, okay. awesome. Those hey, fall out all over the bar. Now there's coins spilling everywhere and everyone's looking at you. <laughs> And they're all gasping, and there's coins all over the floor. So roll me a percentage chance for how many fell on the floor. Eight percent. All right. Yeah. So a couple fell on the floor and roll away. You can leave them there or pick them up. It's up to you. It's a pretty holy town. There's eyes watching all the time. I don't yeah. think there's going to be much thievery. Yeah, yeah. It's true. There are floating eyeballs in this in this bar all over the place. Yeah, and no, I'll, I'll grab those. And then, uh, I want to take them to the... Well, I'm going to get two more drinks. Uh, I'm like, oh, I'm rich. Uh, I want to go to the cube. Well, I guess I'm going to go to the cube dispensary. You can go back with me to pick up my rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you go over there and you turn in, you you carry as much coins as you can in your arms and say, I have all this money I need to declare. And they ask where you got it from. Mom. All right. <laughs> they laugh and, you know, they let you deposit it. I want to know a little bit more about this mom. Me too. I, 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 I like, like she's sending you messages. Yeah, I want, I want to talk more... Uh, I got this, a few questions for the mailman. Uh, Why don't you show me that letter and I'll roll a little knowledge arcana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that mom sent me some. Oh, I got, have a, would you like to roll arcana or knowledge plane? Either one would work, but they would both give you different information. So whichever one you roll will tell you something um, different. How about I roll them both? Yeah, that's fine. Alright, you're going to do that. That's happening. That mom's pretty funny. Alright, so I'm going to roll a knowledge arcana and like he's, he tells me, he's like, oh, I got this note from my mom. She's dead. And I'm going to be like, that's a little odd. Uh, so I'll roll some Arcana, a natural one. Gosh. Yeah, you've never ex- yeah, you've never encountered anything like this note at all. It, it definitely has a magic aura about it, but you can't discern anything about it. All right, well, that still would have been a 17, by the way. Oh, well, that, with a 17, then maybe you would have something but a natural one, so yeah. Yeah, but it was a natural one, so I, I'm going to roll it. All right, then I'll roll Knowledge Planes. Uh, it's going to be a 19. All right, so with that, you would be able to tell this note came from another plane. It looks like it came from a good aligned plane. Uh, so one of the uh, positive planes it has traveled from to get here. That's nice. That's nice. She's giving me a gold from the afterlife. Uh, what a woman. It's like your inheritance, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it says, don't spend it all in one place at the bottom of the note. <laughs> Can't That's you in heaven. <laughs> Clean your room. Uh, I guess um, I'm not going to be, if I could ask questions, uh, the, the, the mailman never, actually never told me his name. Uh, well, he I, he I, left the bar and then you went and met up with Cersei, so you can roll a perception check to try and find him around town. That's terrible. Oh, he's yeah. moving too fast, I bet. He's not moving fast. Uh, that's a 16. Uh, yeah, so uh, you go around the bar and ask if anyone's seen the, the, the post, you know, the guy, with, the guy with the messenger bag, the guy that gave me this note. And they're like, oh, old Cole. Send her a message back. Yeah, yeah. You better write so your they say uh, they say he's a hard guy to find. He you only see him whenever he's got a message to deliver. Uh, that's cool. All right. Well, uh, I have to see him again. Yeah. As soon as there's a message to be delivered to you, you will. Yeah. He's the, they they call him a sacred messenger. Uh, 
Rumor has it he's not alive either. He's a, he's also a spirit that's passed on that just comes that shows up here in the city of Aurora to deliver messages. That's exciting. Five couple of drinks. Uh, it's the same. That's I it. Yeah. God bless. Yeah. Speaking of saints, we now have uh, Ramses in Vortiga's yeah. body visiting yeah. the Aurora Temple. You uh, head to the Aurora Temple, uh, yeah. which is a sprawling spa-like complex full of with saunas and private rooms, massage rooms, etc. So the same services that are offered outdoors in the baths. Are offered here, but it's you know much nicer uh, because it's less crowded. It's just Iroarians. It's open only to Iroar worshippers only. Uh, so no, if you don't worship Iroar, they, they will not let you in. But you do, and that you say so on your cube, and that's verified whenever you get to the door. They check your cube. Yes, you do worship Iroar. Um, everyone else will be asked to wait outside quietly. So the area around it's very quiet. It's, it's surrounded by gardens, and even that they ask people to please keep it down. Um, and there are eyeballs watching. So if you do act up in that area, they respond very quickly. Inside the Aurora Temple, there's also a temple arena, or what they call the Irorium, for priestly battle, for priests to battle each other. Um, and you would know that here in the Aurora Priesthood, the, if you're if you're high up in the priesthood, you're known as a champion. Yeah. So, so there are yeah. so there are many champions here. So this is where a lot of the uh, the, the highest. The, yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, but as you as you enter the temple, you have trouble with Vortiga's body. Her body won't cross the threshold. That's what I was about to ask. Can I roll a knowledge play? Because I, was, I had a feeling you weren't going to let me go on the string and, uh, with the Vortiga's best. So I knew this was about to happen. So, knowledge plays. And that's going to be an 18 plus 2. Alright, so uh, you would know that there is something strange about the place you are in. There is some sort of uh, planar difference where you are. And in this Aurora Temple, you can just sense that it's a holy place. And this, and the fact that Vortiga worships another god and is evil, uh, it's preventing that body from entering. You feel like you could separate from the body and go into the temple, but then you would be leaving Vortiga to her own devices in the city again until you could recapture her body. You do feel like the... You do feel the same sense you had in your sanctuary back in uh, Southport here, so you feel like you could go freely as a spirit in this temple and without a body. But like I said, you'd be setting Vortiga free if you enter the temple. That's exciting. I kind of like well, where this is going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a uh, Vortiga spirit to uh, bring the rope. All right, so one of the priests and one of the guards uh, brings you a white rope. You have now 10 foot of white rope. Uh, can I get 20 seconds and ask them to help tie me to the nearest column? <laughs> okay. They, they, uh, happily comply. <laughs> okay. 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 okay, and I say, um, uh, if you don't mind, in about an hour, could you come untie me and when I say Ramsey's ass is for you to untie No, you need a safe word, buddy. Well, they don't know who Ramses is. Vortiga doesn't know who Ramses is. Vortiga only knows who Vortiga is. I'm going to assume that also you told me just to always call you Vortiga. Yeah. Okay. Like, I told you about the whole story. So you, you've so, told the guards I, to keep you tied up until you uh, signify that you are Ramses. They've, uh, you came to the temple, so they've already heard all the information on your cube. So they know, they know who you are, they know who Vortiga is, they know all the information about you. Because yeah. you've come to the temple, they've listened. Anyone that enters the temple, they, they know all the information on your cube. So the guards know what's going on, they seem okay with it, they tie you up and they say they'll wait for your instructions, uh, you know, fo fellow follower of our will wait for your instructions to release this body. Thank you so much, and if you have to, for an hour you can uh, put a gag in her mouth, because I know she can spell some nonsense. Alright, so they, they, uh, they get a towel and shove it in your mouth, uh, and you, <laughs> you strain, uh, roll me a fortitude save when you leave the body. Alright. All right, so you struggle to leave the body, uh, and uh, it's very difficult. You feel tethered to it. So you, for the first time you try to leap out, you feel like a string as you like yanks you back. Okay. Uh, can I try again? Yeah, you can. Uh, but first, I need you and I need Vortiga to roll a will save when that happens. All right. Or you do a will contest basically between the two of you. Okay. Uh... Vortiga's will is going to be a 19, 
and Ramsey. Ooh. That's going to be a 14, but I'm going to surge. Um, and that's only going to be a 16. One more surge! <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey's feels Vertiga oh, Spirit. Right, yeah, Ramsey's feels Vortiga spirit trying to take back hold whenever he left out the body. That's enough to, to regain control of the body so you can try to exit again, because you feel like if you gain control, you'd be trapped in her mind. So. Okay, I will re-roll Fortitude. Alright, try to escape the body again while you're in control. Yep. Alright, so yeah. Uh, you regain control of the body, and this time you get the hold of it, and you push even harder. And you're able to separate yourself from the body. You feel like a membrane tearing when you leave, like a, a etheral membrane, like you were stuck to it. Umbra. Yeah. So you, you know, you rip apart. Uh, you physically felt that happen as Ramses. Uh, it was kind of painful uh, to tear yourself away from a body again to be a free spirit, but you're now a free spirit, another little spirit floating above the ground. I need Vortiga to roll a perception check though. Five. All right, Vortiga wakes up, and I don't remember what the last thing she remembers was, but I think it was somewhere in, in Demon's Knot, the last thing she remembers. So yeah. she wakes up, and she doesn't know where she is. She's surrounded in this white place, this strange good aura that makes her feel uncomfortable. And there's a spirit staring at her that she recognizes that she fled from before. And I'm going to say... Um, With a towel in your uh, mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Ramsey's not have a top. No, 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 Vortiga. I thought you meant Vortiga was going to say no. something. Okay. As Ramsey's, I will... Oh, God. As Ramsey's, I will say to Vortiga. Okay, got it. Uh, Vortiga, you are now free. Uh, I will say to Vortiga, I'm going to say to Vortiga, Vortiga, you are now free. 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 It's got her tied up and says, I'll be right back. Vortigas is going to freak out, Especially yell, try to yell. Yeah, yeah. But it's going to be muffled and it's around the temple. They're going to keep asking her to keep it down. Uh, if she fails to keep it down, roll me a percentage chance. Roll me a sense motive for her if she actually shuts up whenever they tell her to keep, to keep telling her to shut up or if she keeps yelling. Ugh, she's going to keep yelling because that's going to be... All right, they're going to knock her unconscious. <laughs> Sweet. That's fine. Yeah. Right, so, so she's unconscious, and you enter the temple as a spirit. Alright. So I go to uh, the altar for uh, just one of the praying prayer chambers, and I uh, go to pray to Irori. Alright. Uh, you pray to Irori. Um, this is probably the clearest, most uh, amplified version of Irori you've ever witnessed, even in your old monkey temple when Irori visited you. It was like a nice, you know, quiet visit. Uh, in this temple, you feel like Irori's on a loudspeaker. In your prayer at this altar, you see Irori as a giant in front of you. Uh, and But it's still speaking to you, like standing right, you're, you're like in front of a toe, basically. You're, you're, you feel like the altar you're leaning on has become his foot. And uh, you're now leaning on Rory's foot. Rory is also nude in this temple. Uh, so you're leaning on his big toe. And up above you is his big dong. Uh, ah! Yeah, yeah. But here you are in his temple, and he's uh, you hear the booming voice uh, respond to you and call out your name. Ramsey. That's right. Yes, God! <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, so nice of you to visit. We've missed you. Uh, we've missed you. I missed you. That sucks being a ray, though. Just floating around in eternal darkness with just two glowing dots for eyes. It sucks. I feel like someone rolled a deathly D12 or Skyway <laughs> rolled a D12. It sucked, and I'm still pissed about it. This <laughs> is, uh, things happen. This is, uh, you, you know, do? you know, in the, the, the faith of Ivory. Uh, you know, you take your lumps, the good and the bad comes, and you, as you, you stayed uh, true to your faith, and hence are are able to come back and meet with me again uh, from the material plane. I represent. Says, uh, I hope all has been going well with you, and you've been bringing about good and understanding to the world, bringing knowledge to the people. 
so that knowledge is power, and if, if everyone understood what was happening, maybe we could bring about a good resolution to all of this instead of destruction. I agree. I'm trying to uh, tell one of the most powerful people I know to join uh, our side, not necessarily convert, because we do believe in religious diversity. But, um, I think that her power alone could potentially shift the side, and if we can get her more of the original group that we had, uh, the original people that I adventured with, we can, uh, try to counteract the scourge of the, H the HBI. Says, uh, yes, uh, you are one of the original nine, says, and, and all of your powers are, uh, are, are strong with the crystals, as you guys will be drawn to the crystal just, be just because you were chosen. Says, the, the crystals have chosen you, and you will be drawn to them, and therefore able to gain the power that no one else can. Says, uh, you've already had a taste of this power, and so has Cersei, and so has Vortiga, unfortunately. Yes, um, very unfortunate. Yeah, and, and we're, we're, you know. So right now we're at a, uh, one evil, one good, one in the middle as far as people that control these crystals. Um, That's what I was worried about because, uh, you know... We need to, we need to swing the balance back our way. We need more, we need more control of, of what's going on in the localized universe, at least. Uh, as gods, we try to stay out of affairs on the material plane as much as possible, but we have chosen a certain, a certain few to, to resolve these issues on their own. That's what the seats of power were there for. Uh, each, the, the good and evil gods created these so that uh, we'd have emissaries, we wouldn't have to you know, bother with the world as much, we'd have someone there to do it for us. They're like uh, our emissaries to the world. Well, I feel like uh, the Codex is a great key to this battle, and it is in the hands of our uh, old ally, Oss, but I just have to uh, worry somewhat if he's going to just use it and be manipulated by its power because the Codex is an infinitely powerful book, but... Because that's the danger of all of this power, really. He says, uh, that's the, the, the risk we run every time we do this. He says that's a part of the trade-off is that we run the risk of, you know, if we, we give humans power and we hope that they can use it responsibly and we try to lead them along the path and the, the, those in the seat of power try to manipulate events so that by the time they reach it they are, are ready for it. But power can corrupt anyone, uh, which is why so many do turn to the dark side and we have such trouble maintaining goodness here on the material plane. Um, which is why we, we altered events to bring you back, Ramses. It says, uh, we, we, had, uh, we had one of our own inside the HBI plant the Wraith Crystal on Vortiga so that uh, she, we knew she would deploy it and we could bring you back. So uh, we, we had a plan all along because we knew we needed uh, another, good, another good soul on our side. But, now you're here in this temple, uh, we need you to speak with a temple leader here, Bera Bera. Okay. She's a leader, leader of the champions, uh, completing his unbound journal. Oh, Bera. Oh, dope. He's, uh, the leader of the champions, uh, and you will, uh, as an Ivorian, now that you've reached this great temple, you've made the great pilgrimage to the... This is the largest temple in, in all of the material plane for me, for Irori. Um, this is where the, the priesthoods make their pilgrimage, which is why my, my, so many Irorians come here, pilgrimage here. Um, but through rigorous testing and trials, you can become one of the champions. After 12 trials, you'll be able to summon a green dragon. How big is that bad boy? Well, it starts out small, and then you have to you can summon it, and it gets bigger every time you summon it. If it uh, if you use it wisely, and don't if it doesn't die each time you summon it, it grows the next time you summon it. Okay, after outside of the game, so I have to do twelve mythic trials. Not mythic trials, twelve trials for Irori. So twelve, they're, okay. they're, they're, they are they are outside of mythic trials, but they are uh, there'll be things that are uh, that are determined by the temple. So, so like the they, and it's control. not like a lot of other places. There's not like a board that's going to tell you what to do. You just need to be out in the world doing Irorian things. Stable. When you do twelve very Irorian things, I don't want to clean the stable. No, 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 no. Like shittiest, shittiest, shittiest job. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> when you do twelve things that are deemed uh, Irorian enough. And you can petition Iroria for that too, so anytime you do something that you think was uh, very Irorian, that you think counts as one of these 12 trials, you can pray with Iroria, 
See if it does, see if it counts as one of your 12 trials. And when you've completed 12 trials, you will be a full champion. Have the ability to summon a green dragon in, in, in emergencies. It gets stronger every time you summon it if it doesn't die when you summon it. It's, but you're also charged with protecting it. It's a it's an animal that it's a dragon that you are charged with protecting. It protects you, you protect it, it's a symbiotic relationship. Um make fucking dragons, that's bananas. Yeah. Only one. You only you can only have you only do it once. Uh, and you get it whenever you get your first unbound journal, which is also an honor in the Irorian faith. An unbound book. Um it's a book with an endless pages that you fill with your knowledge. So you, this will be the tome you leave behind for the generations that follow. This is your compendium of knowledge as an Irorian. Can you also, like, forever rip pages out of it and still never get some deep so you just write notes for people? Correct. That's swell. You leave a little bit of breadcrumbs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's a long tome. Your Unbound book is a long tome about meditation, diet, exercise, uh, about meeting and transcending limitations. Um... Full of aphorisms. Most of them are full of aphorisms and metaphors, riddles. Um, they're, they're, they're designed to challenge the readers as much as you know, as yourself whenever you write it. But you can use them. Other people's. You can if you find an unbound book or if you borrow an unbound book from another champion, uh, you can use them. Uh, depending on which whose book you get, will have a skill or an ability modifier bonus whenever you use those books. So like your book, whenever you finish it, your unbound book. If someone else reads it, we'll have a bonus from Ramses. Uh, because they have your knowledge whenever they have that book. So they can solve appropriate problems or gain appropriate bonuses to, that would apply to Ramses if they have your book. They have a portable Ramses. So, like, if, if, say if I was holding that book, I could get his perception check? Uh, if No, Modified. it would have to be uh, an applicable skill, because you don't gain perception unless it was like a poem about paying attention to, like, a poem about how I look at... If you, if no, he wrote, so if, if Ramses wrote a riddle about using your eyeballs, I would say yes, maybe, but then I would require him to do that, because that's a tricky no. one. But thing, for things like knowledge, is, yeah, knowledge rolls, uh... What about it, Yes, because there are exercise tips in the book. So if you, so if you had previously read the exercise section, then you could have a temporary bonus for the day if you read the exercise section and did what it said. So it would be like... In, on this page is Ramsey's exercise regimen, if you follow that today. So they'd have to read the book and then do what it said. So I'd say, you spend two hours exercising. And then for 24 hours, then for 24 hours, you would have a strength, a bonus to strength or a bonus to attack from using Ramsey's book. Wow, that's a joke, dude. But he won't get that until he... Till he completes his 12 trials, yeah. And then he gets it. That's gonna be a while. You get a dragon and a badass book. It's like, it's like, here, you wanna do really well with this thing? Take but, my hold my, borrow my book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Says uh, everyone can be saved. You know, as a follower of Aurora, we believe in redemption, and you know. Well, is he gonna be harder to save than the monkeys? <laughs> well, the monkeys are, are well, the monkeys are on a predetermined path, and and Pleak, Pleak is, has now that Pleak is uh, on this path with you guys has the ability to choose one way or the other on her own. Is he on the path of the shadow monkey. I don't. I can't. I don't know Pleak. Pleak doesn't pray to me, so I can't. I know I know very little of this Pleak. Come on, Grim God, Iron Yeah, you have to talk to Pleak, Scott, if you want information about Pleak. That's not what I'm here for. Um, I do have a lot of answers. I would say, uh, here in town, Irori has uh, her fingers on a lot of pies. There are also uh, secret agents of Irori called the Cleaners. That's why we gotta go to the laundry. Who, uh, they have the ability to wipe memories of those... Uh, as necessary, they have mind-altering power, so if you're really worried about Pleak, maybe you could, uh, you know, alter her mind a bit. Yeah, take her to the cleaners. You know. Yeah. Take her to the cleaners. Yeah, well, that, that's not Irori's problem. She's just saying that if you if you really need to alter someone's mind at any point in time, there are it's secret agents of Irori. Oh, uh, the hell portal's not open right now. But if they do open it, that's up to you guys to solve. I, Aurora just can't give you. I can't give you that kind of information. That's up to you as, as heroes, as people with the power to change the outcome of events to figure out on your own. Well, we gods have sworn not to, to not interfere any more than, than to give advice. That's all we're allowed to do in these matters. Well, is I'm advice. happy to see you, great giant god Aurora, and I'm 
and uh, do the white hand symbol and uh, she like lo like low fives uh, you from like way above. Uh, Boom! It's like the big high five. You know, you're like this. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. a giant high five. I will uh, go talk to Bara Bara. All right, you come out of your meditation and look around the temple for Bara Bara. Uh, we'll leave you there and right. go to uh, Harlock's Pachimen and yeah. Froderick Cipher. And Nala Cypher. Alright, uh, uh, On the Isle yeah, of Reyes. Sure, I'll get you some snacks. Just some snacks. Just snacks. I'm gonna be... General. Yeah. Is this Bella like Cootie and Reyes? Uh, uh alright. So I know that... Uh, Brian, we want to do a little... A little metagame here. Okay. Um, I'll allow a little of it. Um, it's I just know. for a group continuity, essentially. Yeah. Um, we're thinking... Uh, Frodrick and Harlock would like to take a tour off the island to, uh, you know, maybe try to bring more people in, and Frodrick wouldn't mind seeing his old lady Cersei, um, and, uh, leave behind Fancy and Nala. Yeah, yeah, so let the ladies run the town, they've got, ladies, they're, they'll, they'll have a they're fine, yeah, yeah, they'll be in charge, so they'll, yeah. they'll, they're, like, basically running the town while you guys are gone, they are, the, 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 the council is now a four-person council consisting of the four of you, yeah. uh, so while you guys are gone, it's just the two of them. The other yeah. merchants in town. The other merchants in town basically listen to you guys because you guys run the town. Because God, I hope they get along. Did we hang out enough before yeah. we left? Before I'm we sure left. they're so fine. Can we have a couple of like dinner dates. Yeah, I'm sure you guys like you guys become fast friends. You guys raided a gym mine together. You guys are totally best friends. Yeah. You, you run a town. Yeah, you guys should have all these zombies. Uh, Fancy doesn't like the zombies, but you you know Nala does, and then you guys get along really well. So I'm sure it's fine. You guys are like, you know, couples that hang out together or whatever. It's cool. All right, well, the boys are boys are going on a boys' trip. All right, going on a little weekend out, on a, a, a vacation. So want to let us, like, metagame this to the most effective way. Okay. We send five ships. One, we're going to be on one, and we send... We said you had five ships. We did the roll for ships? Yes, right. we roll yeah. for ships. All right, yeah. Um, send one to every other continent besides Reyes. Yep. And then, if we are not lucky enough to land where... Supposedly we want to go. Uh -huh. um, then we'll just have a common meeting place and figure out where. Like we'll, we'll look for word of Cersei. And... All right. So let's do this this ship travel first. We'll assume you guys are able to get together a zombie crew yeah. of, of 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 dudes and maybe. Well, some humans there too. There's there some humans, like... but a lot of the humans that stay behind are merchants that are trying to open up these shops and run you know run stuff for you guys. Yeah. So they don't have. Uh... Well, this could be lucrative. Let's. Uh, yeah. Do we have any yeah. So you can maybe talk a couple of the merchants into taking maybe like three of the ships, or four of the ships. Roll me a diplomacy check to con to to get to convince four merchants to take four ships. And you um, guys, you guys take one, I assume. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm gonna see how you roll. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna actually. Uh, oh, actually, mine is uh, fourteen. I got a, a 15 for di diplomacy. Uh, however, I would maybe prefer to use intimidate. Honestly. Like, yeah, like, you can do that. You can roll intimidate instead. Either one's fine. Guard, you know, all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah um, you could be like... <laughs> so that, that'll take me to a 24. All right. So between the two of you, between uh, between Froderick's uh, scary zombie intimidation shit... I have a chunk missing out of my face, too, by the way. Yeah, you do. Uh, so between that and uh, you're, you're schmoozing with the people you know from Oestra... Uh, you're able to get together a zombie crew and a merchant for all of those ships. So you have four merchants, each on a ship, uh, going to spread the news about new town of Rotville to get more people to come and buy their goods and maybe make some trades and things like that. So, that, so they're taking whatever goods they can uh, that they've been able to produce in this short period of time. And just the, just the idea of, of coming back with goods and stuff, even more stuff to sell in their shops. You were able to pitch that. And we'll roll a percentage chance for each boat. Pick which boat you guys want to be on, I guess, is the first question. All right. One uh, through five. It's one through five. Yeah. Four of them are merchants, one is you. Let's so see. what number is you? Beautiful. All right. Um, and let's list, the, uh, let's list the islands on the board there, one through five. Okay. Um, There's Nerwin. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you're bad. I got it. Nerwin. Nerwin. Uh, there is Hero's Tomb. Oh, God, being up there. All right. There's East Linya, West Linya. Are they one island? Or we well, it's one, one island, island, but you would, you would, 
usually land on one side or the other, but if you guys want, if you want to count it as one, you could do that. That's fine, and just choose a side whenever we go there. Um, then there's also, did I say Kelnar already? No. Kelnar, Demon's Knot, and Norland, I believe, is the last one. Alright, well, that's more than more boats than we have. Wait, are we on we are You're on Reyes. We're on Reyes, so that, that's... Um, you guys would know... Uh, roll me Knowledge Local. Because you might know... There are six, right? So maybe you know which one to avoid. Uh, uh, do you guys want to... Do, do you have Knowledge Geography? Dude, I'm playing Frodrick. He, yeah. He's got, like, feet. He has, uh, I don't yeah, I don't need skills. Knowledge. Yeah. He probably doesn't have a lot or anything like that. So yeah, you guys aren't really sure. Um, but I will say uh, a place called Hero's Tomb is probably not, not, you know. <laughs> I would say even with those kind of roles, you might have heard legends of that place. So you might know that there's no goods or people there. There's no cities there. So that's probably worth avoiding. Okay, and unfortunately... Frodrick would know that the last place that he was actually able to contact or knew where Cersei was was Norland. Yeah. She was the Darling Metropolis. Yeah. So you can specifically have him heading there if you that's what you, if you want to go on that information. Or you not just... what I want to do, but <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Well, you could also you know ascertain it's been a time since then and she travels a lot. Um, you can pray about it or have uh, Nala pray about it. She's a good and Maybe there's a... Uh... Let's, uh, yeah, we'll... we'll... We'll do a, uh, we'll do a thing of the temple? Yeah, knowledge religion. All right. Uh, which I can't roll for. You can roll it for Nala. Give her a plus knowledge. five on that. All right. I'll make you a sheet for her. I'm sorry. I haven't done that yet. That's a 23. Yeah. So that's plenty. She feels like uh, uh, with a prayer to Urgothoa, she might not be able to pinpoint Cersei's location, but at least be able to send her new husband in the right direction. Yeah. All right. Alright, Milani's not gonna So before you leave, Nala prays to Urgothoa. Uh, roll me a percentage chance for how close of proximity the, the, the details are from Urgothoa. Uh, 14. <laughs> Alright, so there aren't a whole lot of details, uh, but Urgothoa will say not Norland. Alright. So you can cross that off the list of. You can send a merchant there, send a merchant to Darling Metropolis or to the Pearly Island there, but, but you, got, you know that you wouldn't want to be on that ship. Alright. So we have a one in four chance. Alright, so we've got our five uh, continents that we're going to go to. We're not going to go to Norland, we're not going to go to the Heroes Tomb. So we've got the other five, Nerwin, East Linia, West Linia, Kelnar, and the Demon's Knot. Alright, so then you could pick your, put yourself on one of those ships. You said ship number three? Uh, yeah, for ship number three. Alright, uh, roll a D5, or D6, and whatever number that is, that's where that ship goes. Uh, I don't know, man. What do you? Or if you want, you can roll them in order. Roll ship number one and see where that goes first, and we can do process elimination. I'm okay with that too. Hey, Frederick's uh, mythic. We let me search it <laughs> <laughs> to the right amount. <laughs> no, that's, 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 uh, if you can actually roll the right amount, which I think we yeah, need to be even riskier. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but if I make you search it to fucking yeah, no, I can, I, that's how I we ended up in the heroes. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do want a percentage. No, well, what I want you to do is, uh, roll, what, roll, roll five D6s, and then we'll roll a percentage if anything happens on the way. But, uh, okay. if you want to roll each boat in order, if you just want to skip to your boat and roll your boat, that's fine, too. Either way is fine with me. Roll, 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 roll. All right, we're starting with boat number one. Where's it going? All right, well, we're, yeah, we're, we're just rolling, uh, one D6. Yeah. Three. Yep, and if it's someone that's already, if someone that's already been, then just re-roll it. Or if it's a All six, right, re-roll so, it. Uh, we're just gonna go boat by boat. So sure. boat number one, we're rolling for it. We'll start. Three. So they go to West Linia. All right. Boat number two. Now, boat number two. They go to Nerwin. All right, boat you guys. This is boat number three. The boat you guys are traveling on. The most important boat. Uh, that doesn't exist. We'll yeah, roll, that's a re-roll. Six is re-roll. Five. We go to the Demon's Knot. Alright, so that's not bad. It's, it's, that was pretty recent. Yep. Alright. Uh, 
Alright, the next two boats go where? Uh, let's see. Boat number four is not going to the number six. Not going to number six still. Uh, still not going to number six. Oh, wow, geez. dude. Four, they go to Kelnar. Alright, that should, by uh, process of elimination, leave you one place for the last boat. Yeah, so Eastland, yeah. Alright, so then, starting with the first boat, roll percentage for each boat to see if anything happens on the way. Alright. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll roll. You want to? You roll for number one, so you roll for number one. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. All right. Where was that boat going? West Lenya, number one. That boat makes it to West Lenya safely. All right. I'll let you guys even pick whichever. With a nineteen, you can even pick whatever town you want in West Lenya that it lands on. Preferably the north side, since you came from that area. But really, with a nineteen, uh, you guys were. Uh, you guys were able to. Uh, come on, uh, White Castle. No, that's, that's Eastland, yeah. And they don't have a port. That's in the center of the island, so they don't have a port. Uh, maybe they would go to that witch town that I don't know about. Covenston uh, is also, uh, landlocked. No oh, port. Uh, yeah. I, want, I really want the sorcery to go there. That'd be a lot of fun. Oh, she will. I'm sure. That's, uh, I designed that town for Cersei, so I'm hoping she'll go I there, too. I don't have a map of, uh, uh West. West yeah, so I just, you, you want to roll a D6? Yeah. Right, I'll pull. I'll pull up a map and let you guys roll. Uh, let me see, one second. I'll pull up the West Linia map. Neverbrooks is landlocked as well, right? Nope. They've got a port. Oh shit. All right. So one, two, three. Wait, where are four, they from? Five, Oestra? Six, seven, eight. Oestra. There are eight. Yeah, they're from Oestra. That's in West Linia. That's in West Linia. Yeah. Well, that just wanna... makes sense that we go there. We can assume that if you like, rather than roll a D eight. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's do that. So you sent a ship back to Oestra to spread the news uh, back to the, the people yeah, that did. Bring more returns, you know. Yeah. All right. So they return to Oestra. Back to people and their families and whatnot. All right, and then uh, boat number two. Boat number two is me for. Uh, they're going to Nerwin. They got a twenty-six. All right, Nerwin's pretty close. Uh, so that's that's good enough for me. There's kind of choppy waters. There's some sharks. It's pretty dangerous. But they arrive uh, at a troll dock. Oh, that's fine. Oh, well, they're zombies. Yeah. Zombies so they're just. Legacy, it's know. yeah. Uh, um. Ortega started out her adventures on this island, I believe. Uh, yeah, but yes, it's, it's mostly a troll island. But this is a small like tavern, so there are some adventurers that come through here, and a lot of trolls that are looking for work or looking for, you know, the trolls that smashed the city before came from here. Um, but maybe the zombies can figure some way to convince them to come back and not smash the city and just like live there or something. Maybe uh, sell some of that got mountain. A nice cave. Yeah, you've got a merchant on this boat, so so here's what we'll do. I'll let you guys figure out. Yeah, you want to maybe try to sell the the, the cave to the trolls? You got a merchant on the boat. Maybe you can sling some real estate. We'll wow. roll a diplomacy for this boat merchant to bring in some trolls for your caves, making troll caves. Uh, yeah, I'll be like, hey, we got all this like beautiful, beautiful cave space. It's just going uh empty. Maybe some of you trolls might like to, like, you know, they've been there before. They raised, you know, tried to raise plenty of, uh, yeah. uh, uh, raised so several times. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna roll the on that. Look for the big kitty troll. Uh, the bar. Five plus whatever you want to give them. Seven. Uh, so. Well, mine's just seven. Yeah, right. I'm not on the boat. Yeah. Um, but it's still gonna be pretty low. Um, yeah, no takers. Uh, they, they have plenty of mountains here that are empty, so you, yeah, you realize you're in between a large right. mountain range. They don't see any point of taking a boat to another island to live in a different hole. Um, can we roll... I need you to roll what? something for Oestra, too. Roll me a percentage chance that you got there safely. Roll me... Um, we'll say a high percentage chance as you come back with more living people, and a low percentage chance as you come back with more zombies. But either way, you'll come back with something. 20. Alright, so you come back with some more zombies. Actually, that's 30. Still uh -huh. zombies. Alright, plus, uh, how many zombies? Roll me, uh, D20 times 100. Alright, that's 60. 100 Yeah. Come back with a thousand more zombies. Oh, nice. Wait, how's that work? Uh, no, it's ten times... Ten times 100. Ten times 100, yeah. Bam. Ah, that's a lot of damn zombies. Yeah. Shit. I should have said ten. Oh. Well, that's fine. I, I said it, so now there's a bunch that's of zombies. That's, that's way better, man. Yeah, yeah. It is now canon. Yeah, it is now canon. It really happened. This ship is overladen. 
This ship is overladen with zombies. Now, these, each of these trips is going to take several months, so it'll be months for these zombies return to the island, but... The, the closest okay. ship, uh, the one from Nerwin, will return the soonest, but I think it's returning empty-handed, unless you guys have something else on Nerwin that you have an idea for. Yeah, nothing on that. Alright, so, uh, right. so that ship leaves forward. Nerwin un, uh, empty-handed? Yep. Uh, we'll go to you guys' ship, roll percentage, to see if you guys land safely on Demon's Knot. Uh, 89. Oh, you guys are gonna have an incident before you get there. Uh, so we'll deal with that in a minute. You guys will have some sort of water battle. But we'll do a ship four and five really quick because those are NPCs and less stress. All right. Uh, roll percentage for our ship four. Yep. That's going to Kelnar. That's fifty-six. All right. Uh, so the ship does take some uh, damage during a storm, and it's stuck at Kelnar for a while until it can get repairs. Uh, but it does make it there safely. It just needs repairs before it can leave. Um, so we'll have your sh your ship's captain there. Uh, he will sell some of the goods that he brought uh, to be able to afford to make the repairs. Uh, but his ship will get impounded. So until you can afford to pay to get it out of the impound. Alright, so now we're down to four ships on this. That happens. But he will, right, he will uh, go ahead and uh, try and send word back. He will try to send a messenger. Uh, he'll he'll it would cost less money. money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's he saved up. He had a little bit of money left over, and he had a message sent to Rotville uh, oh, via via awesome. another ship. So there's another ship heading back to Rotville from Kelnar. He was able to at least spread the word. So there is another merchant ship coming from Kelnar. It's just not this ship. It's not you guys' ship. Um, but there'll be word coming to to Reyes in a couple months that there's a ship stuck in impound. You know, send send money. What do they want? How much? Roll me a d20 times a hundred. I'll roll that. 600. 600 gold. It's not a whole lot, but he's fresh out of cash, so. You guys can just wire him 600 bucks or something. Get his ship out of impound, he'll come back. Uh, Nala's pretty rich. He's, yeah, yeah. Uh, She's baller. You got all the gym money. 71,000 gold from yeah, yeah. the mining operation. Yeah, so you're doing fine. Yeah. You can afford to get a ship out of impound. Uh, is there one more roll, or are we done? Yeah, there's one more. You can roll for Eastland, yeah. Am I doing a uh, percentage? Yeah. Same thing there, same way. Yep. 97. Uh, so they're going to have an incident before they get there. They get attacked by a giant dragon turtle. Roll me a percentage chance to see if they make it out or not. A giant dragon turtle? So we're going to dragon turtle. Well, we're going. 33. 33. Uh, so, yeah, they take some damage to their ship and land in the city of Galbraith. Cool. Uh, but their, their ship is very badly damaged. Roll me a uh, d20 times 100 for how much it'll cost to repair the ship. Uh, 1,600. So yeah, 1,600 worth of repairs where they can leave. Um, and they didn't have any goods to trade. At least they were coming to, to pick up goods and not sell goods. Uh, so they don't have anything to, to buy their way out. So they will also try to get a message back to uh, Rotville. Of course, that, I'm not with them, so I can't give them any money. Yeah, but no. the Nala will... Well, they, they will they will send they will send word as as, he, as soon as they can. There's a lot of ships leaving here. There's a lot of adventurers in town, so he was still able to spread the word to some adventurers to go check out Rotville. Um, and on that ship, they, they promised they would pass on the message that they would go check out Rotville and look for some adventures there. Go fight some stuff in the woods. He says there's some you know there's good fighting there. So some of these young college kids that are just getting out of college want to go adventure there and promise to deliver the message that there's a ship stuck here that needs some money. And now for you guys' is water battle. Let me pull something up. Water battle. Are y'all doing a water battle? Yeah, like you guys encounter a uh, pirate ship. Do it, pirate. Yep, a ship full of pirates. Uh, let's see how many there are. Uh, so roll me a D. Roll me a uh, D twenty for how many sailors there are in the ship. All right. Plus two. <laughs> All right, so there are two sailors plus a captain plus two to four officers. So roll me a D four. It's gonna be a small pirate ship. One. So there's one officer, two sailors, and a captain on the ship. So four. There are four people on a very small pirate ship. Uh, you guys are actually pretty near, pretty near uh, the island of Demons Knot. This is a, like a like a small raiding party type ship. 
But yeah, they look like they're trying to rob whatever merchant ships are coming with it. And just outside of the protected waters of Westport, you guys haven't quite made it to the part where there uh, are a bunch of these larger uh, ships from Westport. You're in the still in international waters. And a small band of pirates sets upon you. These four pirates uh, will run a bridge your ship. You can go ahead and put a ship token on the battle map if you want. Uh, sure. Let's use for a ship token. And then put another one about six squares away from it. Will be number six. And the captain of you guys' ship alerts you that a small vessel is approaching at very high speeds. You guys can't steer it out of the way. So it looks like this ship is is is, po is poised to either ram you or run run a run aside to you and you know, right, well, I'm gonna hop run, aboard. I'm gonna roll a perception check on uh, what's going on 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 the boat. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna seventeen. Harlock's taking a nap in a hammock. Yeah, I got a six. Yeah, okay. you're you're you're, sleep, you're resting in a hammock, staring up at the sky. You just hear people yelling outside of the hammock. You hear the muffled yells of like there's a ship coming. So you know something's up, but you don't see anything. Roderick. I I rolled a, a seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, you do see the ship approaching. You can tell it's. it's Probably an attack or a pirate's vessel because it's approaching so quickly and it's small. Uh, looks like they are coming straight for you guys, so it's some sort of attack. And they are flying s like a pirate's flag, um, a black flag I of some sort. Run to the captain real quick and be like, do we have any armament on this ship? Uh, roll me your percentage chance to see if you have any armaments on this ship. Uh, Eighty-two. He says, uh, well, we were traveling to Westport, and so uh, we had the smithy whip up some weapons really fast. We were d doing a weapon delivery. Uh, that was part of this trip. You guys were also delivering goods. So beneath the deck, there are some crates uh, full of, like, swords and stuff like that. So you might be able to defend yourself with some... No kind of, what, cannons or anything, but... No cannon or anything. But you might have some, like, crossbows under deck I've and some a swords. I've got crossbow on me right now that yeah. I'm prepared to use. I'm using my, uh, decent, uh, perception check. I would like to just try to. I'm not can't just like aim at the ship. I want to hit like the helmsman. That so you want to try and aim at the captain. You want to call shot captain. They're kind of far away, so that'll be a call shot. It'll be a minus five. So six, six, six squares on the ocean is not the same as six squares on the land. Uh, so okay. I should explain that. Yeah, distance okay. is different. I, I, I respect that. That's yeah, yeah. Cool. So for these, you need to be like right next to the, the ships. Need to be uh, within one or two squares for you guys to be able to shoot at each other. Uh, oh. Oh, but the ship is approaching and will be close enough to you guys in a turn, probably. Do we want to spend a turn and wait? Your ship, your ship moves, your ship moves two squares a turn. And theirs moves five, so. Because they're smaller. Yeah. Maneuverable. Do you want to wait a turn? Well, it's not. We're not going to wait a turn. Ready. Sure we're ready to rock. Uh, make sure that all the our crew members are armed and ready. Yeah, they will go below deck and break out some of the crossbows and be ready to defend you. Uh, roll yeah, I'm gonna and go roll a D10 for how many people are on your ship. Seven. Seven. So there are seven uh, people on your ship. Roll me a percentage chance for how many of them are zombies and pretty useless. Zombies can still be told to attack. They can be, but... You don't uh, have your uh, Oregon with you. I think that's. Is that zero or a hundred? It's zero, zero, zero. Zero. Yeah, it doesn't matter. There's it zombies. Will, it doesn't matter. <laughs> either none of them are zombies or all of them. We have to decide now. Uh, I'm okay either way. I don't care either way either. Uh, all of them zombies. All of them are zombies. Yeah, ship full of zombies and you two <laughs> being attacked by four pirates. Party. Move the pirate ship five uh, five squares closer to you guys. You can move your ship two squares, but only straight. Uh, well, that puts we'll us close. Next, let them, yeah, we're next to each other. All right, so that, now it's attack phase. Roll for initiative versus these pirates. Uh, we're gonna roll for each boat once, or you roll for yourselves because you're personally attacking. Unless you just want the boat to attack and you guys to watch. Oh man, I like that fight. Just want the zombies to handle everything. We'll assume you guys also have a human captain, so there's like at least one other guy with a weapon. I got a 17. I got a 6. <laughs> Alright. Oops. Pirates got a 19. So the pirates get first attack, which makes sense. 
So two of them hop aboard your ship uh, while the captain and the, uh, his main, his head crewman remain behind. The two lower sailors hop aboard your boat. And they're brandishing rapiers. And they swing at the two of you. First is a natural 20. We'll say that was on Frodo because I know you're stronger than Harlock is. That's fair. That's fair. And then the 6 plus uh, BAB is 5, so 11 versus Harlock. Nope. Alright, so he swings the rapier and misses Harlock, but the damage on... Roderick is 15 damage. Damn! It wasn't at 20. Oh, and then it's right. you guys. Alright, I was... I got the higher yeah, you I'm going to... You're on dead, right? Yeah. I don't want to fuck this Do up. Do not feel me, I'm a zombie. I'm going to cast Lifelink on Frederick. Alright, how's that work? Uh, every five points of damage, I can, I can take all of its damage within five points. Okay. And then, like, you heal yourself. And then I can heal, you heal yourself. Myself. Smart, I like that. Way to work around the zombie thing. Yeah, uh, that's really clever. I like that. Yeah, I like it. Alright, so that was your action. Do you need anything else? Uh, I'm gonna... I think it's got a 30 foot range, so I'm gonna get a spell. Well, you just casted a spell, so... It... What's that? Well, you just casted a spell, so that's his action for this turn. That's... That, wow. You can that move. move you can still move. Casting a spell is like a, a, a main phase action. It's like part of, you know, counts as your attack right, phase. Now we're, we're on the boat. And there's two people on the boat. Yep. Well, what else can I do then? I, I don't know. I have you can only move or do a quick action. You can't attack. Is All right, I'm going to move far away. Well, but you're going to uh, attack a lot. Yeah, it's already, it already swung a sword at you. So if you try to dodge, unless you, act, you can acrobatics out of the way. Do you have acrobatics? <laughs> you can, like, try to climb. All right, I'll just stand there. All right, you'll just I'll stand there? Attack. All right, you're ready. You can, like, ready in action. Yeah. I'm gonna buckler up. Uh, oh, yeah, you get your defenses ready. I'll give you a plus one to defense as long as you got your buckler up. We'll All consider right. that. All right, and then that's uh, back to them. Yeah. Frederick go? Uh, no, Frederick's not gone Yeah, then, then Frederick. Oh, okay. Yeah. My turn. All right, uh, I'm just gonna swing at uh, the guy in front of me. All right. Uh, the guy that uh, stabbed you? Sword. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to be a 27. It's a hit. And an 11. 11 is not a hit. Damage, yeah. Yeah. So that takes it to 11. Right, so that five more. Uh, these two guys gonna attack the the captain and his uh, his main mate. Stay back on the ship. So just these two guys are attacking you because they notice that your zombies are kind of just like. Argh. So it's just the you know, they're just fighting you. Uh, it's a swing and a miss. Can we have the zo our zombie crewmen start like uh, hacking at them? Yeah, you can have them try to. They can, they can grab swords and you can have them swing in too. Uh, just roll me a percentage chance for the zombie horde, basically. I'll roll that. I'll roll for zombies. Uh, 72. Alright, so that's a hit. Uh, 72. Alright, so we'll say they were able to also. Uh, they see you guys getting attacked and they rush them. Uh, and I'll let them do some damage too. Roll me a d6. Alright. 6. Alright, I'll do 6 damage to both of them with their, like, slashing attacks. Yeah, they're so you guys, on Adam, basically. Yeah, yeah. So you guys are now also surrounded by a, you know, a mass of zombies flailing their arms. You guys are kind of in this, in this I'm massive trying, attack. It's preventing these these pirates from getting any further on your ship than right where they are. All right. Uh, was that both uh, pirate attacks? They yep, they both went. I missed both times. So yeah. All right. You were taking more damage. What's that? I'll give you guys bonus because we'll say they're being flanked because it's surrounded by these zombies. So I'll give them a minus oh, yeah. two. You didn't take any damage. I took fifteen. I mean, that was the first round before yeah. I cast last one. Yeah, yeah. Life thing, so yeah. You but this time you did not. Yeah, so I can't. Alright, uh, I'm going to step up and swing on the most injured one. Alright. That's fine. He's uh, right next to the other one, so roll it. 
Uh, 18 to hit. That's a hit. What is your weapon? Uh, you're a king of it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh god. Okay, so I'm gonna swing with my oh, oh, morning god. star. It's gonna be 6 damage. Alright, 6 damage to the weak one. Alright, and Frederick. Alright, Frederick's gonna roll for the two attacks. Uh, 15. That's a miss. Oh wait, that's a hit. I forgot they're flying. That's a hit. Alright, uh, 15 and, uh, 8, so yeah, just one hit. One hit. Alright, the 8 plus, it's gonna be a 5, and I'll go ahead and, uh, surge again on the one that's in front of me. Alright. the one that's in front of the Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that makes that 9 damage. Alright. Alright, so this one, uh, this one sailor is pretty bloodied up. Roll me a, a perception check. Alright. Yeah. I got a 20. I got, uh, 18. Alright, so yeah, you'll notice that this, uh, pirate crew is all women. Um, now if you, yeah. Uh, now this lady's hair is down, now she's been roughed up a bit. She looks up at you and she looks scared. You guys are well, there's all these zombies and you can, she didn't expect this. You can tell us they're in over their head. Yeah. Uh, I'll roll intimidate. You know, uh, Alright. Alright, roll it. I'm gonna do. Diplomacy and be like. If I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> be like, listen, I'll be standing behind him, like, you know, all yeah. that. Alright, right. roll an intimidate to be intimidating behind him. Yeah. Oh, you still got your sword out, I mean, you guys are in the middle of this battle, so. This is on mid battle. Yeah. All right. So you, you command them to stand down. Let me see if they. Yeah. Uh, they they seem pretty they seem pretty frightened. Um, and they they, they just both hop back onto their ship and flee. Uh, wait 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 wait. You get a tax opportunity if you want. They're on our boat. Well, yeah, but their boat's right next to yours. Yeah. Well, let's try to knock. You can attack them. You can attack an opportunity them as they try to leap back onto their boat. We're on a. a... Yeah. No, no, the boat's not gone yet. They're sleeping off your boat. The boat's All not completely right. gone. I'm just saying they're leaping off of your boat onto their boat right now. You can attack I'll an opportunity when they're... So we need to stop one before they get away. Because we're on an information mission. We're trying to find... Yeah, yeah. Are there any, like... I want to do a perception check. Uh, you can do, like, a reflex save to grab one of them or something as they try to leap I away. I want to see if this is, like, grabbing hooks or something we can throw onto their ship so they can't get away. Do you have that in your inventory? I don't, but the boat might. The boat does not have a grappling hook in its inventory. I got it. I'm gonna do a CMB. Okay, to grab a one? Uh, the bitch that uh, brought down to a D and was looking all scared. So you're gonna grab the weak one? Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. grab the weak one. Alright, roll it. Alright. Here we go. That's gonna be a 20. That's, you're able to grab her. You all wanna right. do anything with the second one or let the second one get onto the boat? You wanna do something? Uh, I'm busy right now. Yeah, I he's grappling one. one. I'm gonna run and jump on the boat. I have to advise that. Just go right ahead. Why not? You're a level 1 character. There's like a bunch of pirates. Versus a level 100 of something. You go right ahead. Alright. It's your character. Because I'll be with you, so. Alright. You don't have 50. Uh, no. Yeah. Now we have a hostage situation. Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna yell at the captain. We got one of yours. Surrender or die. All right. I guess I'd be intimidated. Yeah, yeah roll it. Can we roll a percentage chance that we got the captain's daughter? Yeah, I'll allow that too. Dig it. Sixty-one. No. Nah. Oh well. Man, my intimidate probably didn't work as well. It is her sister, though. Seven. Ah. You don't know, but she does seem very worried about this one pirate that you guys have. She she screams, "Let her go." Uh, surrender, and you can have her back. Alright, she, she, she waves a white flag. Alright, sweet. So, if I have her back, so now that they surrendered, we can put them all on the brig, right? You don't have, you don't have a brig. You're both, no, you, know, you don't have a brig all, on your damn boat. We're gonna take all their weapons <laughs> and their 
goods and then uh, let them be on their way. Alright, they have a very small ship. Uh, they didn't have very much. You can take their weapons though if you like. You can have four rapiers and four um, masterwork light crossbows. Masterwork light crossbows. They ain't got no gold, man. Shitty pirates. Uh, well, they were after your gold, exactly. <laughs> they were a shitty pirate. Well, I guess we'll let them let go. Oh, we could really get some expanse here. That would be nice. I know, that's what I'm saying. Alright, let's crawfish on the deal and kill them. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna. I've, I've had my sword to the sister's throat the entire time. Uh huh. I'm just gonna slice, good rock, take her out. Anyway. Yeah, I call on a morning star just on someone's head, like, smash. Like, oh, we surrender. Immediately just. Oh, I'll let you guys coup de gras those two, but you have to fight the other two, though. Right. They're gonna react. They don't have any weapons, though. Uh, yeah. So they're just gonna try to, to lunge at you guys. Uh, so what's your guys' CMDs? Uh, 17. Uh, should be. Uh, 14. Alright, so uh, unable to grab Froderick, but able to grab Harlock. Uh, Harlock is knocked to the ground. And she pulls a small knife out of her boot and holds it to your throat. One that you did not find. Alright. Uh, and she I says, You killed me? my sister, you bastard. Do I get like a reaction to this, or am I gonna wait till next round? I mean, it is next round now. Okay. There's no need to wait for the next round. The next round's already here. Just tune in next time for more. Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater.